ideas. Don't forget, if you're in grades two through five, go to my Google Classroom, okay? Because I have stuff posted there, plus you can um, put things, messages to me there. And if you want a Zoom meeting, some of you are doing that with your teachers already, you can let me know and we can set up some times just to get together or try to make something together. It's kind of up to you. Anyway, um, and one other thing I wanna say, if you're making stuff at home, always check with your parents first. Check with them before you start using scissors. Check with them before you take cardboard to use for something. Make sure that an adult knows that you're using things that are sharp, if you're using scissors. And, sorry, that was my cat. And um, <laughs> make sure that you're allowed to use what you're using. Even like supplies that you think might be not important, maybe somebody in your that lives in your household um, needed it for something. So double check always with people in your household before you start taking stuff and cutting it up. Okay, and make sure an adult or very much older sibling like high school or over 18 knows if you're using scissors or anything sharp. Okay, so please do that. Now, so I'm gonna turn this around and I'm not great at videos. In fact, I don't even know if I can turn it around in the middle of making a video to the other camera. So I'm gonna have to try and see if I can. Um, it actually doesn't look like I can, which is why I was doing this at a different. Okay, so here's video two. Um, this is showing you the prototypes. Sorry, I guess you can't. Well, I haven't learned how totally to use this yet in my phone. So maybe you can turn the camera around from like front facing to back facing in the middle of a video, but I don't know how to do that yet. So I guess I'll be researching that today. Anyway, I want to show you um, some of these prototypes I made of connecting cardboard without any tape. Uh, so you can see my kitchen counter. Here's my supplies, my, my prototypes. And um, I haven't cleaned up my mess yet, but that's okay. Um, so here's a couple of different things I tried for a chair. And I just, oh, I lost a couple. Sorry. Don't put things on top of your stove like I have. That's a really bad idea. I just moved it all aside to make this video for you guys. So my first thing I was doing was trying to, I was trying to make a, the back of a chair stay up without putting a bunch of tape on it. Um, because I'm trying to make a chair out of cardboard without tape. So one thing I came up with was cutting some slits in it and, and cutting slits in the cardboard to match it. And I'll, again, I'll show you how to do that stuff later, but you can get an idea of this. This is just the chair back. This is standing up. Then when I was making, so then when I wanted to put the legs on, um, I made these four prototypes. And you can see that this one doesn't, sorry, this one doesn't really work. Um, oh, a piece of it is off. But I kept trying, right? So I have four different whole chair prototypes, sorry, four different whole chair, whole chair prototypes, and then the back of the chair that's by itself. Um, so you can, like this one, I think, actually, no, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, you can figure out, you can try your own prototypes and see what was wrong with this. There's a couple things wrong with it. Um, if you notice on the legs, this is something I've done with some students in Makerspace where you take two pieces of cardboard to fit them together and you cut a little slit in both of them. And then it fits in, which I don't think I'm gonna be able to, okay, dropped it. Put it back with one hand because the other hand is holding the camera, but you put, it, you put the slit in and then push them through each other like that. This chair probably won't stand up anymore. Oh, it does. Um, but you can see this, I'm not crazy about this way the chair looks with this back the way it is, and there's some other problems with it. Okay, and then, so here's a different one where, I think this one didn't work at first, but I figured out something to make it stand up. I don't wanna tell you what it is. I want you guys playing on your own. This last chair, I thought of, as I was thinking about it and trying to think how you guys are gonna cut slits in cardboard um, without using a box cutter, which I don't think is, the best thing for you to do because I end up using a box cutter and I thought of a different way to do it. So you can see I made these legs by bending, actually, 
Again, not going to explain it here. Um, but I was able to make these. Eh, I was able to make this in the cardboard without using scissors, not using the box cutter. Now, I have some pretty heavy duty scissors here. I'm not sure if it's going to work with like the um, kid scissors or not, but it's something you can try. And I bet you guys can come up with a way to do it. The other thing I wanted to show you, besides making stuff stand up, is how to keep cardboard together. If you're making your own box, say, you know, we don't have a bunch of tape. So one thing you can do is cut these little notches in it and match them up. Now, um, this is just obviously two sides of a box. Um, this, I guess you would do if you had a bunch of little pieces of cardboard. But the important thing here is that it's like a puzzle. My notches fit exactly together because when I, I drew them on a piece on the cardboard together so they would match. I drew the little marks to make to cut them out. And again, I will not be able to put this back together with one hand. Okay, so, but you can see how that works. Now, then I was thinking, what if I want to do a whole box, not of a bunch of pieces, but you can do what's called a net. And we've some of, some of the classes have done this in class, or I've at least showed you, where you cut out a shape on one piece of cardboard and then it all folds up into a box. And again, sorry, doing this one-handed, so it's a little bit difficult. So then this folds up into a box, but then we have the problem of how do I make it stay together? And we have the other problem of how do I fold it up one-handed? This is not that coordinated. Oh, so you can see that wood, if I cut all the notches on the other, on the sides, which I did not do on this prototype, this was the first one I did like this. So this is only my first prototype. I have to do more, um, but then maybe I could get the sides and that to stay down the way I want them. Again, there's no tape. Um, interesting thing. Oh, here's a, here's like more of a tent shape I made doing it. You can see this is pretty sturdy and these match. Um, you probably don't know this, I don't know, you might, um, that very expensive wood furniture is made. Okay, sorry, stop that by mistake. Maybe I'll learn how to splice together a bunch of video clips today too. Uh, probably I will not do that before I post this. It's gonna take me a while to play with that, but at some point maybe I can put the clips together. Anyway, what I was starting to tell you was some very expensive furniture is made um, using this notch system. So they put it together without any nails. Um, I wish I had some to show you, but like I said, it's very expensive wood furniture. Uh, but this is how they do it. And it's all, it's all done um, in this way. And it's a lot of work to do this with wood, but it's really nice because there's no nails or I think they might add glue. I'm not sure. Um, if I can find some pictures of it sometime later today or some other time, I'll show you. Anyway, uh, that's it. Putting cardboard together without, without tape. Okay, obviously, if you have tape, whoops, sorry. If you have tape, this stuff is a lot easier. Um, but I know a lot of students don't because they tell me when I ask them if they can finish stuff at home. Anyway, that's all. So sorry for these videos are not are pretty rough, um, but I'm just learning how to do this in this way. So I, I'm going to assume that my videos will get better as I do it more and as I learn more stuff about it. Um, just like as you, your projects get better as you learn more and you um, learn more about different things. So last thing I'm going to say, because I'm going to say this a lot in my videos, don't start making stuff unless you check with other people in your household. Check with adults, make sure you're allowed to use it. Make sure that a very much older sibling, if you have one or adult knows if you're using anything that's sharp. Doesn't mean they have to, depending on how old you are and what the rules are in your house, because it's their rules. They don't necessarily have to stay with you, but you need to let them know if you're, uh, if you're working with something sharp and you're using tools. Okay, and um, I guess that's it for now. So, 
I hope you're able to make some stuff. I'm going to have some like ex actual projects for you and challenges to work on um, to go with stories, kind of like if some of you remember the um, squ squirrel proof bird feeder. Um, but we'll have some other challenges like that. And um, I hope I'll be seeing you soon, one way or the other. Okay, this is Miss Gross, out. <laughs>